book, you aren't immersed in it as much as you would be in real life, seeing it in real time in front of your eyes. An amazing sight to behold. Welcome to Art by Nature Garden Center in Palm Beach Gardens. We're here to look at our uh, colony of Purple Martins. We have been uh, Purple Martin landlords for, uh, for the last 10 years. Purple Martins are a, a native songbird. It, it's a migratory native songbird. And uh, they, uh, they arrive here in January and, uh, and leave in June or July. Purple Martins are unique in that they, uh, they're one of the very few species of birds that, uh, that live happily in uh, close proximity uh, to people. The ethnobiologists tell us that Purple Martins are naturally cavity dwelling birds and that generations ago, millennia ago, Native, Native Americans who were uh, the first farmers on the continent realized that purple martins uh, were eating insects above their fields. These insects, of course, would have been uh, damaging to their crops. As a result, these Native Americans took uh, dried gourds, hollowed them out, and hung them above their fields. And over time, there was a behavioral tradition shift. The, uh, the purple martins began to, uh, to live inside these, these gourds. As time went on, uh, this tradition spread from, uh, from the first tribes that uh, had observed this and, uh, and put it to use, those tribes being uh, uh, some of the tribes that were here in uh, Florida, in fact, uh, Choctaws and the and uh, the Creeks and the Cherokees. Uh, it became widespread throughout throughout uh, North America and was accepted as a wise farming practice. And the birds, over time, completely changed their their preference for uh, for habitation, and so. Now it's said that this behavioral tradition shift has been so thorough that without, uh, without human provided housing, purple martins would go extinct. Really quite easy to attract purple martins into houses like these uh, uh, as long as the area that, that uh, hosts the house is uh, is open, and we, what we try to have is uh, at least a 40-foot flyway in all directions, with no really tall overtopping trees. It's important that the houses be uh, be sturdy. Aluminum is uh, is the best. It should be white painted, and these are. These are colonial nesters, meaning that they are happy to have neighbors. This house here has, uh, has 12 compartments in it. And it's also very important for, for the houses to, uh, to be at a minimum six inches by six inches. And even better if they're more like this size, which is closer to uh, seven inches by 10. The larger that they are, the greater per the protection is against, uh, against predators. Uh, hawks and owls are uh, important uh, predators. And we... Uh, we do want to uh, make sure that the birds stay, uh, stay secure. As you see, we, uh, we label uh, all of the individual compartments so that we can uh, keep records through the year. And uh, so this is the A house, and we have B, C, and D behind me. E and F are over there. And so it swings open. 
and we can easily take out this nest tray insert. Now this is a this is a, an almost completed nest. Uh, what remains will be just a little more uh, soft material on the bottom here. But all of this material has been brought in by both the male and the female over the last week or so. This, uh, this structure that's here in the front is called a mud dam, a mud dam. And uh, the compartment or the insert itself has, uh, has a mud dam built into it, but uh, on, in, some, in some instances, the birds still naturally build another mud dam behind it. And the mud dam is a bulwark that uh, not only supports the integrity of the nest, but also serves as a protective structure uh, from any predators that would come in from the outside. So all this material has been, has been carried in by a two ounce bird. And they're, they're really, they're, they're strong and they are, they're crafty. Two ounces, by the way, is, uh, is, is the, the equivalent of 11 nickels. Small bird, small bird. This is a, a starling exclusionary opening, and this will prevent starlings, which are aggressive towards purple martins, from being able to gain entrance. The proper height for a purple martin house is, uh, is 12 to 18 feet off the ground. This year, uh, the first purple martin arrived on uh, January 20th. And that is, that's relatively consistent over the years. The oldest martins return from their migration first. And they are, they're highly fidelic to where they have nested before. So again, they only nest in North America. They migrate and roost down in, uh, uh, in Brazil in the Amazon basin. So uh, the oldest ones return first. Typical lifespan of a purple martin is four to five years. Oldest on record uh, was 13, and uh, that was known by a band that was uh, found on that bird. So when we talk about, uh, uh, about Fidelic, we are talking about them returning specifically to this colony. And so that means that over, over time, our colony gets bigger and bigger, and thus we have added more and more uh, housing for them. Purple Martins uh, take take insects at, at up to 500 feet above the ground where they will find dragonflies, damselflies, uh, houseflies, and very importantly, uh, they eat uh, flying termites and they'll also eat um, uh, fire ant queens. They do not eat a lot of mosquitoes. Mosquitoes make up less than 3% of their diet, then that is because mosquitoes are often found much closer to the ground than where a purple martin would uh, be foraging. We've been doing this for 10 years, and uh, in the first year, we had only, uh, only one nest, and it had five eggs. Uh, many of those birds returned the next year, and uh, in uh, year two, we had 15 eggs. In year three, it jumped all the way to 75. And from there, it has, uh, it's, it's grown and grown and grown. Almost, almost uh, every year do we exceed the previous year. Art by Nature Garden Center does nest checks on the Purple Martin houses twice a week. We do that on, uh, on Tuesdays and Saturdays. And 
the purpose of that is so that we can uh, we can make sure uh, that that the birds remain healthy, and we also uh, can collect information that at the end of the season we submit to the Purple Martin Conservation Association as part of their citizen science uh, project, Martin Watch. Our colony is one of is one of 200 colonies around North America that submits this kind of data to uh, to the Purple Martin Conservation Association so that they can compile it and use it to assess the uh, health of the population throughout its range. And this is the kind of data that we collect. It's all in, uh, in shorthand so that we can get through it uh, much quickly. On this sheet, we have uh, recorded when the first egg was seen, when the first egg hatched, and the date that the first bird was fledged. I love birds. <laughs> We were here and my mom was trying to get milkweeds because she has a butterfly garden and we met Tim and he started talking about the Purple Martins and then I started getting interested and then he mentioned the nest checks and I was like, I'm coming in here and I'm going to start doing this. Oh my goodness. We record this in a journal and we date it. So if one week there's an incomplete nest, then the next week there might be a complete nest, and the next week there might be three eggs. And it's just, yeah, it's just really cool just to watch them progress and grow. All right. To us, the, uh, the egg of the purple martin kind of looks like uh, a white Jordan almond. Uh, when, it, when it hatches, the bird uh, emerges uh, featherless, and sightless. It takes until about day five before we really start to see the development of feathers. Uh, we generally refer to it as a five o'clock shadow. And then from there, the bird uh, puts on more and more feathers. It is a very fast developing bird. And these are, these are all true to size uh, photos here <clears throat> and uh, we use these photos uh, to age birds within 28 days this bird goes from from a Jordan almond sized egg to uh, to able to fly and and fly spectacularly well I've never had that kind of experience before um, but it's just so intriguing to see what their daily lives are like. We're a little more than uh, two months into the Purple Martin season. They return this year around January 20th. And for the first two months, they, uh, they seem to uh, acclimate and uh, they pair off and they nest build. And soon thereafter, again, two months or so into it, egg laying starts. The female lays one egg a day at dawn and once she uh, starts to lay she continues until the clutch is complete. Uh, the clutches are usually four to six eggs. They can be, they can be uh, an egg or two smaller and they, and they can be uh, seven or eight eggs but almost always it's four to six. Uh, incubation starts uh, when the second to the last egg is laid, referred to as the penultimate egg. And incubation takes about 15 days. It is only uh, done by the female. And she has a, a, a special uh, part on her body called a brood patch. It's uh, on her abdomen and that area uh, has few feathers and a lot of blood vessels close to the surface of her skin. That proximity to blood generates heat that uh, serves to uh, incubate these eggs. So it takes about 15 days. Almost always, all the eggs uh, that are going to hatch 
uh, will hatch within within two days of the first egg hatching. Only the female uh, incubates, but uh, she doesn't stay on the nest 24 seven. She will, she will leave and be replaced typically uh, by the male. Here in South Florida, where, where there is, there's plenty of heat, uh, it's not as crucial, it seems to me, for, uh, for there to be a bird on the eggs consistently. But the, uh, the, uh, the, the male will be nearby, will spell the female when, uh, when she needs to leave the nest. Reading in a book, it just doesn't, you're, you're aren't, you aren't immersed in it as much as you would be in real life, seeing it in real time in front of your eyes. It's an amazing sight to behold. It's just really cool just to watch them progress and grow. We've gotten to the stage where the Purple Martins are uh, beginning to hatch. And in fact, over the last, uh, last 10 days or so, we have gone uh, from zero hatchlings up to 140 uh, uh, approximately. And there are still some eggs to hatch. Uh, during hatching, both the male and the female are busy flying in and out, bringing live insects to uh, the hatchlings. And whether the hatchling is, is an hour old or, or uh, 28 days old, the, uh, the parents are constantly shuttling in uh, insects to them. It's very important for them uh, to hatch uh, in as close of, of a time period as possible because these birds grow so quickly that a bird that hatches first has quite an advantage over a bird that hatches later uh, in the sequence. What we're really interested in is how many, how many eggs that are laid end up being birds that fly off. Um, typical longevity is more like, uh, like two years or so. So they only get a couple of nests, nestings out of, uh, out of, their, out of their lifespan. Uh, uh, even though none of, the, uh, none of our original birds uh, are, are still with us, they've, they've passed long ago, uh, no doubt it is part of a continuum. And it's said that, uh, that once you have Purple Martins, you have them for as long as you continue to put up a good house. So these, these birds are, are related to the first ones that we attracted. Bush Wildlife saying that they had 13 orphan purple martin chicks. So they dropped them off and we put them in their nests. We organized them by their age. There was there were two bins. There was an older nest and then there was a very young nest. So we went around A, C, and the F houses and we distributed the birds into houses that could at least hold another one or two. You know, we never put any more than two. And we had to match it up with the age because if the adult birds find out that those are not part of the nest, they will kick them out and they will die. So. We only had two fatalities out of all 13. It was in the older nest, so I'm assuming that the adult birds figured out that after a while they've gotten used to their own chicks and they realized, huh, these are not mine. For a Purple Martin landlord, this is the best time of year. This is the culmination of the season. 
So the birds arrived here around January 20th or so. Soon thereafter, they started uh, nest building. They started to lay eggs. We saw a lot of that through March and, uh, and into April. We had hatching and about 28 days or so after, uh, after egg laying, uh, we now have birds that are old enough and strong enough to fledge. And so we have lots and lots of birds that are leaving the nest for the first time. They have not, uh, they have not uh, stretched their, uh, their wings, uh, used their muscles before. So when they first come out of these high houses, it's very likely that they will swoop more or less in an uncontrolled manner, down to the ground, they will, they will almost always right themselves and start their career as aerial acrobats. So a whole lot of that is going on right now. Uh, it, is, it is what we have tried to make happen all season long. So we say that, uh, that birds, purple martins, are uh, re ready to fly by about 26 days. And because of that, as we approach 26 days, we are reluctant to look inside of the nest cavities. We don't want to disturb them. We don't want them to false fledge. Um, we've seen over the years that, uh, that 28 days is, uh, is a good average for uh, how many days of development it takes before they can fly. Sometimes it can be up to, up to 32, but 28 uh, is a good average. And as, uh, as the birds get bigger and it gets more and more crowded inside the nest, uh, the, the whole volume of, of the cavity is, is filled with birds that are all lined up. And uh, it seems that uh, as they get closer to fledging, the parents may withhold some food in order to encourage the birds to come out and to, uh, and to learn how to forage for themselves. We do see that they'll come out on their porches uh, more or less for, uh, for two days before they actually, uh, before they actually fledge. Some are uh, bolder than others and they may, they may make a jump for it uh, uh, right from the get-go. But uh, once they have fledged, they will, they'll stay in the area for about two weeks or so and then they will go and uh, join what's called a pre-migratory roost. And that's where birds from many different colonies gather together. Uh, a, a relatively small pre-migratory roost may have 20,000 birds. The largest ones that, uh, that have been documented are up to about 700,000 birds. And these pre-migratory roosts uh, are in existence for about 8 to 12 weeks. Uh, an individual might be at the pre-migratory roost for about four weeks, fattening up before it begins that long journey. It is seasonal, and when, uh, when the birds are gone, which will happen completely, they'll all be gone, uh, in July, it's suddenly very quiet around here. It is bittersweet when, uh, w when the birds leave. I do miss the uh, preoccupation with them. It's sad to watch them go, because you think they're gonna be here forever and you're gonna see them all the time. But no, they fly off to Brazil, but they will come back. My protege, Jada, who has been uh, with us throughout the season, and who has uh, very ably assisted and, uh, and, and truly added to the management of our colony. You can definitely bet I'll be back next year. It's, it's been a really amazing experience. The reason that I enjoy being a Purple Martin landlord is uh, two things. One, 
I, uh, I think that it's uh, a good addition to the vibe here at Art by Nature Garden Center. But more important is the fact that I know of no more intimate way to observe real nature than, uh, than uh, as a Purple Martin landlord. Everything that goes on inside those, those boxes uh, is, is authentic. And for it to be right in front of our eyes, and for us to be able to see all of the all those stages of development, it's it's just a wonder, and uh, and we we uh, want we want to share it with as many people as we can. Special thanks to the Art by Nature Garden Center in Palm Beach Gardens. Visitors and field trips are welcome. Call 561-718-2990 for more information. Purple Martin nest checks take place at 3 o'clock p.m. on Tuesdays and Saturdays from mid-March to mid-May.